Hey, this is Mark Henry, author of Dancing with Energy, Healing Magic, and Mysticism, here to talk to you more about the occult and the paranormal. Well, today I'm going to be talking about magic beckons you from the future. Before I begin, I just wanted to uh, remind you that uh, I just added a couple uh, attunements to the attunement store. I um, added uh, Genius Prosperity. Uh, so if you are interested in um, having more abundant and prosperous life, I would check that attunement out. Also did one uh, a few weeks ago on Padre Pio. So if you are somebody who likes to work with saints and uh, using that type of energy, then uh, check that out. And by the way, um, I got a couple messages that people were asking whether I was going to do a Black Friday sale. And usually I don't like, in general, Black Fridays because I don't like going to stores and having to deal with large groups of people and, and having them, you know, run into me and navigate all that stuff. But online Black Friday sale seems to be pretty cool. So I'm going to do that uh, this time. Uh, so I'm going to be discounted all of the attunements. So by the time that you see this video, it should be in effect. If something happens and that is not the case, wait about a day and I'll go from there. Okay, so let's talk about today's video, Magic Beckons You from the Future. So um, as people, and when we're doing uh, magic and uh, also in kind of dealing with the daily uh, struggles of life, we tend to kind of do what's in front of us, you know, what's most immediate, what's most important. And we attack that and uh, we try to fulfill um, those things and we go on to the next thing. Now, when we're talking about um, magic, I don't think this is talked about um, enough. And that is what is kind of your greater goal? Um, if you were to look into the future, what type of future you would you be as a result of the magic? What would your what would the fu your future look like um, as manifested by what you're doing currently with your magic and those types of actions that you're taking, um, the choices that you're making with your spirituality and your magic specifically? Uh, it's an important type of thing because if there's the internal you, there is your um, psychology, there is your personality, and then there is the outward life that you are trying to lead. And with magic, even small outcomes and even small choices over time can have big effects. So, um, as I mentioned just now, that I think that people with their magic, they don't necessarily look for the look at the big picture. You know, they don't look at, okay, so 10 years from now, if I keep going in this direction, will I be where I want to be? Or am I still just kind of putting out fire, so to speak, with my magic? Uh, am I just kind of working at surface level things. Uh, because if you are, if you're conducting your magic in that way, over time, you know, you might not get where you need to, to be because you might have kind of a vision but of your life, but you can't see that vision necessarily because you're still worried about very small, small, small chunk things. So it's important to think about long-term vision and whether what you're doing is inching your way up to that vision. Now, if you look at the vision that in the future it's not pleasing to you, then of course you would need to make those changes in what is your and your goals, the short-term goals with your magic and what you're trying to do. Now, uh, why is all this important? And it's important because, again, we don't really look at if we stretch it further into the future. You know, if we look back, you know, six months before we die and we, and we look backwards, whether that is going to be pleasing, whether we 
went ahead and um, accomplished what we wanted to accomplish. And whatever that is, it may not necessarily be material. It could be relationships, which is something that people do mention on their deathbed about, you know, what do they regret? A lot of times it's not spending enough time with, with their kids, uh, with their uh, significant other. Um, and that is why magic can be used for relationships too. So uh, when we looking at other things, a good pattern, because I don't want to just describe the problem and superficially tell you what to do. It's important with magic to ask yourself three questions. What am I doing? Why am I doing it? And where is this going? The third one's very important. All of them are important, but I think the third one in the context of this video is really important. So what am I doing as far as the, the magic is concerned? What is the, um, the step-by-step -step process? Why am I doing it? What is the reason? What is the purpose? What is the value? And I mean like your own internal values. What is it fulfilling? And three, where is this going? Not short term, but long term. Those are the three questions. And when you can be clear about the answers to those questions, and you are satisfied with that, then proceed uh, with your magic. This is a very strategic way of going about it. If you're not happy with one, two, or even all of them, and you really need to think, rethink about what, what you're doing because magic won't work necessarily, or you may find yourself doing things, let's say, uh, that are out of step with your values, maybe with even with your spiritual values, and you get into a pattern of doing things a certain way, and then you wind up 10 years later saying, how the hell did I get here? <laughs> and you may not have seen it because over time, like I said, these, your choices, especially with magic, which amplifies it, has a little bitty effects. So it's kind of inching your way in a certain direction. And if you are, if you wind up 10 years later and you're like, how did I get here? Feeling like a stranger in a strange land. How did my life get like this? Then you have to look backwards and say, okay, for, you know, the last 10 years, I kept trying to control people, let's say, uh, with magic. I started to direct it towards things that weren't very efficient or enchantable. Uh, it, what the magic did was it only was me trying to cover up whatever psychological issue that I have and it just made it worse. Again, the three questions, what am I doing? Why am I doing it? And where is this going? The two and the three, if you have a little, if you're able to gain a little insight with two and three, then that's going to stop that process and you'll be able to check yourself and say, um, you know, this doesn't particularly this doesn't particularly sound what I'm doing and I need to rethink this and don't do anything until you feel you get answers and that you feel comfortable on all levels of your being with it. And uh, that's basically it. That's what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, before I forget, there's one piece to this. even beyond your personal values of with magic, what is your ultimate spiritual value with your magic and the choices that you're making? The direction of the magic, the intention behind the magic. You know, um, Christians have the idea of thinking good thoughts, being compassionate, 
taking good actions and then heaven as the afterlife the buddhists especially certain sects have nirvana getting off the wheel of birth and death do you have a spiritual framework for your magic what uh, what ultimately are you working towards even bigger bigger picture than what we've been talking about before are you um kind of in the camps with other magicians where they talk about um ascension or uh ipsissimus where both ideas of transcendence where the self is becomes bigger and you become a part of something bigger i don't know that's for you to answer but i can tell you that i've seen people who work magic without that or maybe they have that in the background and they're not living up to it sometimes they with their magic they feel guilty or they feel like you know what what is the purpose the ultimate purpose behind this and of course with we're talking about this larger frame of reference we're talking about you know your ideas of beyond death afterlife reincarnation and all of that so what is your even bigger picture for that does it have a place does your magic have a place in that in your in a spiritual framework and if it does then are you operating in accordance with those values and those ideas Okay, so I know I've given you a lot to think about. This is kind of deeper level stuff. Um, like I said, I see 80 to 90% of magicians just doing superficial type of work with their magic, trying to get their basic needs met of what's in, just what's directly in front of them because they're a lot of times in crisis and desperation mode. And when, when you get past that, or maybe if you're still in there, you still another level is to think about way beyond that bigger picture type of stuff. All right. Well, I hope this video was helpful. Please subscribe and like, like I'll put a link to the description to uh, the Etsy store, if you want to take advantage of that sale and uh, my Patreon. So talk to you later. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.